Hi guys this is Jason Zack from Nathaniel School of Music in this tutorial we are going to learn all about major and minor those two terms which we use almost all the time in the field of music for something or the other to communicate between fellow musicians to teach and learn to read and play or read and write or any form of uh, musical transcription you use major and minor a lot so we are going to have this real deep dive into the two terms and see where all you're going to find them used in our field of music in terms of scales in terms of intervals and obviously in terms of chords so every time you hear the word major and minor the first thing is you should not get confused if someone says play me a c major it does not necessarily mean a c major scale it does not necessarily mean a c major chord you need to be very tactical and very clear about what you're supposed to play so it's a theory lesson but get your pianos out and play along with me so that you also learn a few of the interesting scales and of maybe a few things you don't know uh, which use the terms major and minor before we get started it'll be awesome if you could hit that bell icon if you're a regular subscriber thanks for that by the way and if you're not a subscriber if you visited the channel for the first time if you like the lesson if you're going to like the lesson rather please consider hitting the subscribe button and turn on the bell and if you have been watching my videos for a long long time you need to turn on the subscribe button right now and all of these lessons including this one stuff we've done in the past and which we are going to do in the future we have handwritten notes we have staff notation we have midi we have backing tracks all that is waiting for you on our patreon page so feel free to head over to our patreon channel and get yourself a copy of the notes especially for this lesson which we are doing now right so first of all the terms major and minor can be used when you're conversing or when you're depicting a scale the terms major or minor could be used when dealing with intervals and when dealing with chords so a scale first of all by definition is a collection or a combination or a set of seven notes from a universal set of 12 notes which are all the notes we have in music so once we Uh, collect a set of seven notes not all scales have seven you could also have five notes in a scale like a pentatonic or six notes in the case of a blues uh, or maybe even nine notes here and there in, in certain scales but for the most part a scale is known to have seven unique notes and the eighth note which we sometimes write is the repetition or the octave so what we'll try and do is look at how the terms major and minor are first used in scales then we go into intervals and then chords so what is a scale again it's a set or a collection or what i sometimes like to tell students is it's a buffet of sorts of seven notes when when i why i use the word buffet sometimes because a buffet does not necessarily have directional properties when you go into a restaurant for a buffet you don't have to start by having the main course first or the starters first even though they call it starters i perhaps would like to have the dessert and then have another dessert and then the third dessert uh, and not have some of the soups which i don't quite Uh, enjoy that's why i call a scale a buffet of notes because you don't have to use all the seven or if you like one more than the other or if you like two more than the other use them more so when we use the term major for building scales there are a lot of major scales not just the traditional major so that's what i'll guide you through first so if we take the key of c everyone's favorite not mine really but i'm just taking c uh, which is a very rare occurrence on this youtube channel so let's take c and let's look at the major scale the traditional c major scale so if someone says play c major it doesn't necessarily mean this but if someone says we are in the key of c major 
then it definitely means yes someone is telling you we are in that scale which is c major which has those seven notes c d e f g a b c and we build the scale as you probably already know any major scale is built with two steps or two chromatic steps from the 2 to the 3 another two chromatic steps between the 3 and the 4 there's one chromatic step also what we call as a semitone between the 4 and the 5 is a two step or a tone between the 5 and the 6 is a one step or another tone between the 6 and the 7 is another whole step also called as a tone and then finally between the 7 and 8 just to finish the scale or to check if our answer is correct we do a, a semitone or a single chromatic step from b to c and all the major scales are built like that c major d flat d e flat e f f sharp g a flat a b flat b and then c so all the 12 major scales are built like that and it's important to know all the 12 scales not just c major a great way to do that is with the piano shapes or what i call as piano worms that allows you to visualize between the black and the white note combos whether okay c major is only white so it's literally a straight line but you have other scales where it could be you know e flat major for instance which is black white white black black white white black so if you write the scale it will kind of be like a small boat followed by a bigger boat so to speak boat number 1 would be this and boat number 2 there we go and then that cluster so it's good to visualize your scales in these piano shapes if you will which i call as piano worms or scale worms so there are other terms used for major and some people look at major scales as a family so it's any scale or most scales which have a major third interval which is this e and how do we get the major interval and a major interval is a now i'm trying to distinguish between intervals and scales an interval is the distance as they define the distance between two musical notes and you can form the interval either melodically one by one or harmonically together now it may be ca- called as the distance between two notes in the theory textbooks but what i'd also like to add is an interval is the vibe or the emotion or the mood created when two of these notes collide with each other and that for me is a better definition otherwise i tend to look at distance as actual distance on planet earth which we have a proper measuring devices for it's weird to call distance and at and uh, compare it with the field of music in my opinion so i would just say c to e is a major third which is four steps or four semitones away from any root so you get this major third and it has a very positive happy kind of emotion however a minor third has a more sadder uh, negative serious kind of emotion which is three steps away from the root so when we are referring to an interval we could say we have a major third which is e or a minor third which is e flat and this is quite it you may think it's subjective because emotions tend to be subjective but if you say which is the more the uh, happier of the two i'm sure you'll all agree that the major tends to sound more you know uh, uh, positive or more playful or more happy compared to the minor which is more instead of calling it sad you could even say serious that's a more gen- general way of putting the minor so all major scales are considered to at least have a major third in them and all minor scales which we are going to see after we learn the major scales are considered to have at least the minor third in them so if you take the major scales the basic vanilla major scale which i told you c major or any major 
okay that's how the major scale is built now you can have a small set of modifications to this and get some other scales for example c lydian it also sounds on the positive side but it's a bit more dreamy you could say a bit more unclear or a bit more hazy so to speak how does that happen by sharpening the four so any lydian scale you sharpen the four and then you have another kind of major scale which is the more what i call the more epic or the more braver major scale which we have a name for it's called the mixo lydian scale so you'll be pleasantly surprised to note that almost all the rock songs you hear or movie theme scores if you think it's major it may not be major it could actually be mixolydian or if if the scene of a movie is very ambient or very dreamy or very chaotic for all you know it could be lydian because it's a very unclear scale is a mixolydian <laughs> a lot more braver okay that's your mixolydian what is mixo have it's a major third major scale without the normal 7 with a flat 7 and then we have a few mo mixolydian modifications which i like to use a lot one is called the mixolydian flat 6 which goes a very uh, you could say a celtic scale they use it a lot in in folk music but it still has that major chord or the major third which goes very well with it right chord you can also have another mixolydian variation which would be the mixolydian scale with a sharp 4 Incidentally all of these mixolydian variations are modes of the melodic minor scale. We've done a lot of videos on the minor scales only. So we leave you some of those links in the description on the same similar topics we can also learn a lot about the modes. I've sort of deep dived into the lydian the mixolydian and all the modes which exist in music of the major scale and even of the minor scale. So do check out the modes videos as well which we'll put up. You also have a bunch of exotic major scales a few being the phrygian major which takes the phrygian mode a phrygian mode is essentially flat 2 flat 3 flat 6 flat 7 of a major which is a mode of the major scale in fact it's the third mode now if you want to make that phrygian major as they call it also known as the phrygian dominant scale it would be you get a more you get a more middle eastern kind of vibe and this will work perfectly with our uh, major chord works really well if you ask me so i'm just trying to show you alternate scales apart from the one you probably already know the major scale which which also have the major third in them and also work with the major chord so the phrygian major or the phrygian dominant you could also take the harmonic major which is essentially the harmonic minor with the major thirds so you don't have the minor third you have the major third so harmonic minor is very famous scale harmonic major would be
Okay, there we go. So the same things can be said about the minor scales. You don't just have the normal minor, and that I'm sure you already know from theory, right? You have the natural minor, you have the harmonic minor, you have the melodic minor, and in today's world, we have to kind of consider the fact that you have the classical melodic minor, which has different ascending and descending properties. And you have the jazz melodic minor, which is just one way, ascending and descending the same way. So the natural minor would be flat three, flat six, flat seven. So that's E flat, A flat, B flat. Then you have your harmonic minor, which is which is only flat three and flat six. You leave the seven alone from major, or as some people like to say, we raise the seventh with respect to the natural minor. They don't say that; they just say raise the seven. But I would like to say you're raising the seventh with respect to the Aeolian or the natural minor scale, and then you have the Dorian scale, which also has a minor third, but a natural sixth or a major sixth, a flat seven. It's sort of like the sad cousin of the Mixolydian. If, if you know, the Mixolydian is about power and glory, the Dorian is about more bravery and you know against the odds kind of a scale. So this is Mixo. While the brave scale. the movie scores or the movie music you hear uh, in soundtracks will have either the dorian or the mixolydian hence i thought we should do this lesson to show you that major and minor and life in general is not just major and minor scales there's so much more in the world of music and as i generally say music theory is not about mugging up concepts it's more trying to have an adventure into the field of music and when you have an adventure what ends up happening is you discover you discover new things you experience new things which you haven't before so uh, moving forward you also have the jazz melodic minor which is that's only flat 3 and then you have the phrygian which i talked about earlier when i compared it with phrygian major this is the normal phrygian scale you don't need to say phrygian minor it's just called the phrygian scale or the phrygian mode it's very popular as a spanish or a flamenco scale so again there are a lot of other minor scales which we could go into in another lesson of course or watch the minor scales in the in the video and it's under what i call as exotic scales because beyond a point you can kind of form your own minor scales or beyond a point you'll need to really know music in a very geographical way you'll have to you know if if you uh, if you look at traditional spanish music for all you know a kid learning the guitar is not going to start learning with the major scale he's going to start with the phrygian scale so each part of the world each culture have their own way of learning uh, sort of like anything any uh, cultural thing so that was about major and minor scales just a quick word on interval so there are a variety of intervals used but the terms major and minor which are used for intervals will be major if i say major or minor it will be major second major third major sixth major seventh and for minor it would be minor second minor third minor sixth and minor seventh we do not have a major fourth please remember that we do not have a minor fourth those words are taken up by the perfect words the augmented and the diminished so you have a perfect fourth you could have an augmented fourth you could have a diminished fourth which is rare you could also have a diminished fifth which is common you could have an augmented fifth which is also used in in music so essentially you have 2 3 6 7 those are the degrees in which you can call an interval major or minor so major second with regards to c is d major third is e major sixth is a while major seventh is b while the c to f is called as a perfect fourth c to g is called as a perfect fifth c 
to C is an octave. There's no other word for it really. Or you can call it a perfect octave, which is the official word. Minors, on the other hand, minor two, where you flat the major down by one. Minor three, where you flat the major third by one. Minor sixth, where you flat the major sixth by one. Minor seventh, where you flat the major seventh by one. Or you don't have to flat it; you can just remember it as C to B flat is a minor seventh. C to A flat is a minor sixth. C to E flat is a minor third. C to D flat is a minor second. Okay. So we've looked at the terms major and minor for scales. We've looked at them for intervals. And last but not least, in this lesson, we are going to understand the terms major and minor for their use in triads and chords in general. So as you may already know, you have major and you have minor chords. So how it works is, it's it, you need to remember this. when you are understanding music theory you have major chords which are there in a major scale you have minor chords which are also there in a major scale and similarly you have minor chords in a minor scale you have major chords in a minor scale so remember that chords can be part of scales using the triads using this general logic the scale is a set of notes from the set we play melody and harmony we play tunes and we play chords so we should not get confused when we say uh, for example someone might argue play me g major now it's a very debatable uh, thing for someone to say because is he telling you play to play the g major scale or is the guy telling you to play the g major chord you know it, so we need to specify but if someone says we are in the key of g major yes definitely we are in that scale and we are talking scales if someone says can you move from a g to a c that's also debatable so are you moving from the scale g to the scale c and then the guy is not even saying major or minor so we need to be a bit very clear with when we converse unless of course you've jammed with that fellow musician for years and years so it's easier to talk so coming back to triad so in a major scale there are three major chords built at the degrees 1 4 and 5 as you may know from chord theory so in the c major scale you have c major f major g major to form a major chord you can just write down your scale and 1 3 5 in a scale circle will help you remember this better 1 3 5 will give you your chords or your triads if you don't have any kind of a scale reference you can still formulate these chords easily by going major third and perfect fifth so major third will be as we've studied in in this lesson itself a perfect fifth would be seven steps from the root or if you remember your circle of fifths it's the very next neighbor in the clockwise direction so major chord minor chord and we've put together a little visual chart for all the major chords which can be visually grouped well on the piano you have your white 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 majors which is c major f major g major you have your white black white majors which is d major e major a major you have your black white black majors which is d flat major e flat major and a flat major then you have your miscellaneous majors which is b flat major which is black white white b major which is white black black and then you have all black which is f sharp major f sharp a sharp and c sharp while the minor chords have very similar shapes you have white black white minors c minor f minor g minor you have all white minors which is d minor e minor a minor you have black white black minors which is c sharp minor f sharp minor and g sharp minor and you have the miscellaneous ones which is b flat minor b b w b minor w w b and then you have all black e flat minor okay so minors also can be grouped well and so are your majors now the the cool thing or maybe the not so cool thing maybe you maybe at this point in this lesson you're bored with the words major and minor in the first place right why do we have to call everything in music major and minor that itself may have been 
something the curators of all these words should have thought before they made it maybe the words itself are annoying but i guess we have to stick with it just like the notes in music a b c d e f g could have so easily been called i don't know named after fruits or vegetables or something why should why did they call it a b c d e i don't know really so maybe because of the piano because the piano sort of started music theory historically before the piano everyone was quite happy actually just get a violin play it and be happy the piano just ended up making it very rules and regulations based which i guess is debatable so we have the terms major and minor used for triads or chords now if you expand on it you can build your more fancy advanced chords right you can go a major triad plus a major sixth interval will be a c major sixth chord a major triad plus a minor seventh interval will be a dominant seventh chord or seventh chord a major triad plus a major seventh interval see how i'm trying to be very particular a major triad that's the chord of three notes plus a major seventh interval with respect to c the root when put together that's a major seventh chord so major sixth dominant seventh major seven these are some of the extended triad or chords which build themselves from traditional major triads what about minor so plant c minor down you get minor sixth so minor sixth chord is a bit weird to remember theoretically because it's a minor chord followed by a major sixth interval that's a minor 6th chord then you have a minor 7th chord which is a minor triad followed by a minor 7th interval and then you have a minor chord which is then followed by a major 7th interval that's it's tough to name it we call it a minor major 7th so if you are annoyed with the words major and minor now you have to have a chord which has both of them in one chord minor major 7th for simplicity i would just call this the james bond chord just like some of the other more complicated chords in music like a 7 sharp 9 could so easily be called as a jimi hendrix chord or a jimmy chord you could give it any name you wish or um, a lydian chord or a major triad with a flat 5 could just be called maybe a simpsons chord stuff like that so you can give it your own names but when communicating with others it's good to know at least whether you're di- discussing in terms of the scale in terms of intervals and in terms of the chords because even the extensions of the chords will still continue to have majors and minors and the even more extensions like the 11s and 9s again sometimes tend to have the majors and minors so That's about the lesson guys and I'm just going to have a quick recap with a few sort of questions you need to ponder over as you revise the terms major and minor and where all they can be used first of all as I've been saying throughout the video major minor could be used to depict a scale or a kind of scale an interval 2 3 6 7 major or minor or a chord major or minor triad uh, and then their extensions like major 6th major 7th dominant 7th then we need to remember that there are 12 keys for the major scale so we can say c major is a major scale in the key of c key is the root so there's a slight difference or a big difference rather between the key the terminology key and the terminology scale scale as i said earlier is a set or a buffet of seven notes generally the key is the ceo of that set of notes or the ring leader or the main pivotal point uh, the root of everything so that's the key the key could be any of the 12 as we know there are 12 keys in music or 12 notes in music and just to stress on the point there are four general interval types major and minor 
टू थ्री सिक्स एंड सेवन वाइल फोर एंड फाइव आर परफेक्ट वन इज कॉल्ड यूनिसन एट इज कॉल्ड ऑक्टिव देन देर आर मेनी टाइप्स ऑफ मेजर स्केल्स एज आई वुड वॉन्टेड टू स्ट्रेस ऑन इट्स नॉट जस्ट द ट्रेडिशनल मेजर और माइनर यू हैव वेरियंस यू हैव नेचुरल यू हैव डोरी एंड हार्मोनिक एंड मेलॉडिक एंड फ्रिजियन एंड वॉट नॉट माई आर्ग्यूमेंट इज कॉल अ स्केल मेजर कॉल इट अ मेजर टाइप स्केल एंड कॉल इट अ माइनर टाइप स्केल what makes it a major type the major third what makes it a minor type the minor third interval another point to remember the extended chords or the additional chord symbols tend to carry the same old names major and minor example major 6th minor 6th minor 7th minor major 7th and so on dominant 7th and we need to also understand one more thing we'll probably talk about it in a future video naming of intervals is not very musical in nature it's more alphabetical in nature in other words a major third from c would be c d e that's english doing the answer not music really so there are a few things in music which i guess are very grammatical or very alphabetical or very non musical it's important to state that fact and if you'd like us to cover any of your you know pressing doubts as this was a lot of students have been mentioning you know an explainer video on major and minor the terms and the chords so i thought i'll do this for those of you who've left it in the comments and if you have any other doubts feel free to leave those in the comments as well let us know what you thought about the lesson don't forget to give the video a like and if you haven't already please hit the subscribe button turn on that bell for regular notifications and you can consider heading over to our patreon page for the notes midi files wherever applicable staff notation backing tracks and so on thanks for watching the video cheers